Imagine a facility housing thousands of monkeys, doubling the population of your town. Essentially a monkey farm for lab experiments in your backyard. To be run by the guy who was in charge of the Invigo Beagle fiasco in Virginia. Local officials appear to have made the deal in secret. And now residents are upset. How you can help them next on The PETA Podcast with Emil Guillermo. Welcome to The PETA Podcast. I'm Emil Guillermo, your host for this inside look at animal rights. Brought to you by PETA, the largest animal rights organization in the world. On today's episode, officials in Bainbridge, Georgia, in the southwest part of the state, Decatur County, cut a deal with a group made up of employees of Charles River Labs and Invigo, two notorious companies known for supplying vivisectors with beagles and monkeys. The new group wants to beat any bans of importation of monkeys by breeding them in the U.S. The officials lured them with tax incentives and a multi-million dollar bond deal to build a monkey farm to house and breed 30,000 monkeys. That's more than twice the population of Bainbridge, Georgia. But no one told the residents. PETA's Amy Meyer, manager of primate experimentation campaigns, is part of the team of lawyers and activists aiding Bainbridge, Georgia residents who are fighting the project, trying to undo it bit by bit, starting with the local officials. That is, if it's not too late. Here's my conversation with Amy Meyer on The PETA Podcast. What we're seeing here is truly unprecedented. There's a new company that incorporated that is trying to build the nation's largest monkey factory farm uh, that would be supplying laboratories across the country. And their plan, when it's in full gear, when they've built up enough over the years, is that this facility would be so large that it would be confining 30,000 monkeys on any given day. And the it would be generating more than 440,000 gallons of wastewater each day. The scale of this is just, it's truly unprecedented. And that's why we're seeing it make such huge headlines, because this is a first of its kind in the United States at this scale. 30,000 monkeys is an enormous amount of monkeys. And the thing about it, when I say monkey farm, it's like two words that really shouldn't go together. But who wants monkeys that bad that they want to create a facility that is like a farm that grows monkeys, who would be behind such a thing? Well, for this particular case, this is a newly incorporated company called Safer Human Medicine, which of course is a euphemism as is typical with this this industry. But Safer Human Medicine is made up of individuals who had recently left other jobs in uh, companies like Charles River Laboratories and in Vigo, uh, names that might be familiar to the listeners who have been notorious for um, beagle breeding operations that PETA investigated and later were shut down. They've been uh, involved in allegations related to their importation of monkeys. So that's kind of who Safer Human Medicine is. And of course, these monkeys would be for them to sell to laboratories across the country. They're trying to get in on this money-making scheme of selling monkeys to laboratories. Now, what's weird is that where would they get them otherwise? And, you know, just from a purely business standpoint, you know, if you're like a non-animal rights person looking at this, you say, well, of course we need monkeys. You got to grow them. And here's the point. We're going to have this monkey ranch or monkey farm, but where would they get them ordinarily? And why would this be considered more attractive for people like the safer human medicine folks? Frankly, the safer human medicine folks just see dollars. They see an opportunity to make money. They see, you know, that there have been headlines in the last couple of years about how You know, there's supposedly a shortage of monkeys for laboratories, but the only actual shortage, of course, is in the forest for these monkeys. These monkeys are being depleted in their natural environments, which is Southeast Asia, and they're also from Mauritius, an island off of Africa. Historically, and still to this day, the United States imports these monkeys from those countries up to 32,000 a year. 
And generally what has happened is that they are imported into the country, quarantined here for a month, maybe held for a bit in facilities, kind of like what they're trying to build here, and then sent to laboratories immediately. But now what Safer Human Medicine is trying to do is to still import those animals. They still have to be imported first because they don't have a bunch of monkeys running around here. So they would be importing them and then holding them there to confine them and breed them so that then they're selling off the babies of these monkeys wow. in a way for them to just make more money. And I think they're also, frankly, afraid that it's getting harder to import these monkeys because PETA supporters are very quick to alert anytime there's an airline shipping monkeys. They're quick to tell those airlines they don't want to fly with them if they're shipping monkeys. And, you know, there's just all kinds of uh, diseases going through the farms in these other countries right now. So they're just trying to control this population and to make money. That is what it all boils down to is trying to make money selling these these animals. And so say for human medicine, they come from, like, like you said, companies like Charles River, which used to import these monkeys and uh, Indigo, which imported monkeys also, or actually they dealt with uh, animals for the, for the labs. And I guess this is a way to, instead of importing, they get to domesticate the monkey for the labs. That's, that's the whole goal of these monkey farms. The goal is really just to make more of the monkeys and make them here. Um, I think maybe they're also thinking that um, with how the uh, IUCN classified these same monkeys, long-tailed macaques as endangered in July 2022, maybe they're just trying to get ahead of like if these countries might not want to be exporting these monkeys anymore since they are on the road to extinction, largely because of this industry. I think it's it's all a way for them to see that there's money to be made here and they want to be able to control this, to control things more and do it here. But it's it's not going to work. These, you know, it's the, they would have to import so many of these animals to even start their own col kind of colony here. And it's frankly not going to work because this community is fighting up against it. This community is not welcoming them with open arms. All right, you're talking about a community in Bainbridge and Decatur County, uh, and Bainbridge is the city, right in Georgia. Yes, it's it's a population of about 14,000 down in southwest Georgia. Wow, and this is typical small-town America. I, I live in a town that's not much bigger than 14,000. And how far away is it from, say, a big city like Atlanta? Atlanta is about a three-and-a-half-hour drive Ooh. away, um, yeah. You know, closer to Tallahassee, but still, I think, close to about an hour from Tallahassee. Uh, so, yeah, definitely has targeted a, a more rural community with this. All right. So I get where you are because I know that area, Southwest Georgia, you know, one, one of my daughters lived there. So we're talking about a, a community that if someone comes up to them and say, Hey, we can make a lot of money together. If you let us bring 30,000 monkeys into your, your County, I guess, what is the, the idea? How do, Someone liked the idea, but someone didn't like the idea. Tell me what the dynamic is there. How did it work that 30,000 monkeys is part of the plan to come to Decatur, Georgia? Well, what happened first was before PETA found out about it, before anyone found out about it, there were basically closed door meetings happening with some of the officials from the city and the county and the county development authority to and they were basically saying, what you got for us? What will you give us if we come in? We're going to we would bring all these great paying jobs. And, you know, small rural communities are like a lot of communities are struggling to have good paying jobs for people and a way to keep especially young people from moving away from town when they graduate, um, if there's no opportunity there. So it's understandable that this community, these leaders were looking for good paying jobs. So this company comes to them says, we could bring you all these good paying jobs. What will you give us? And the county and city developed a plan that would be giving them millions of dollars worth in incentives, mostly in the form of like tax incentives, not making them pay property tax for at all for the first 10 years, and then a gradual increase to 20 years, giving them the land, 200 acres of land to build this property on, building up the infrastructure for them, really rolling out the red carpet for them. 
they agreed to all of this before the citizens knew about it, but the citizens um, had a different perspective when they finally learned about it after PETA ex- helped expose it. Yeah, you know, it's funny because cities and counties that are looking for opportunities, they use the tax incentive plans. In the modern day, like big cities, like even San Francisco use tax incentive to lure the, the tech companies in, into, you know, areas that were, you know, run down and, and, and they kind of gentrified all that, that, that was a, a plan, but monkeys bringing, I mean, you got to be pretty desperate if, you know, it's the monkey business that it, you're luring and not the tech business, huh? Yeah. You're not investing into a field that's growing. You're investing into a field that is falling apart, frankly, and is on the outs. It is going to be replaced with non-animal methods that are less cruel and more productive, going to lead to actual cures where experimenting on monkeys has been an absolute failure for decades. And so it's really not forward thinking at all. But that's, of course, not what sacred human medicine told these people. And so I think that they were really misled into what would be happening here. Yeah. Now, you said that it was kept quiet and then PETA did, you know, got a whistleblower, I believe, and and let everyone know about it. What what was the reaction from the people of Bainbridge and Decatur County once they heard about it? I mean, they had their city officials, their city and county officials doing things without the permission of the public that that must have made them pretty upset oh they were absolutely enraged they were enraged from for every angle really they were enraged that they knew nothing about this until their city and county had already signed the deal they were enraged that this was going to be in their backyards and concerned about what it means for their property values, concerned what it means for potential environmental hazards. It's located less than half a mile away from their Flint River, which is the hallmark and pinnacle of the town. Everyone loves this river. It's very important to the community. Really concerned about, you know, hurricanes come through this area. What happens when the facility is hit by a hurricane or power outages? Any number of instances. And concerned about potential for disease risks spillover, uh, tuberculosis, and all the numbers of pathogens that could be coming in with these animals and being there on the property. So these yeah. people are really concerned and they are smart people. You know, PETA has helped with sharing where to find the information, but these folks on the ground have learned so much. They've done so much of their own research. They know all the problems and they've been going to every city council meeting, every county commissioner meeting, trying to convince them they need to do everything in their power to keep this out of their community. But but Amy, how could this have happened? Uh, A project of this magnitude. Now, as a former local reporter in small communities, you bring in some, I've covered a lot of city councils and county councils, uh, you know, supervisors meetings. You get a big project like this. There's got to be an environmental impact statement. There's got to be, you know, talks and plans and and the public has to be aware. They have to know about this. There's public notices. How could this escape that kind of scrutiny? There has to be some kind of funny, funny thing going on here. What, what, What has PETA found out? Yeah, I mean, I think that there has been some funny things going on, and we're still working on uncovering exactly this and exactly what has happened. But so far in that process, now the county commissioners, who were one of the boards who basically signed on to this bond agreement, welcoming this uh, company in for this monkey farm, now that county, those county commissioners have found that the initial meeting that they had, the special meeting where they voted to approve this bond to the company, they said, we didn't do that right. We didn't get, give sufficient public notice. As you said, like they have to be giving public notice about these meetings. The county has found that they didn't do that. And so they're actually going to have to do a revote now on their side of the bond. And they that will happen next week. And they're, all of those commissioners are calling their constituents and saying, we don't, we, we didn't know, we don't want it. We plan to vote against it now. And while that doesn't stop it for sure, it's a really good sign that, you know, constituents are reaching these officials now. But it, it's it's really unfortunate how fast and, you know, there were a lot of, um, you know, non-disclosures signed to try to prevent PETA from finding out about this. 
frankly, because I knew that that we would fight them and it would be hard. But we're we're catching up now and we're still, you know, there's we're looking at all potential legal options and everything we can do to help the community keep it out. Right. PETA has uh, lawyers there. They're helping lawyers are helping the community. But the fact remains, money has already exchanged hands right between the, the county and Bainbridge and Decatur County and this safer uh, human medicine group. I mean, has have they been already given the money? So they their their bond has been um, signed by a judge. So the bond has been like officially accepted. But now the district attorney of Georgia has filed an appeal on that bond. So right now where it's sitting is that it's now been taken to the appellate court. This bond, which is kind of the the project agreement for the whole thing. So right now it's in the appellate court because the district attorney has filed an appeal. So that's you know that's a a good sign. But yeah, there, there had been so many things already signed off on this that it's a lot harder, you know, to fight now because we couldn't stop it from happening. We're having to undo it from happening. But it sounds like someone was trying to pull a fast one on Bainbridge and Decatur County people, not necessarily the official. Someone on the official side was sort of in cahoots with, uh, with this safer human medicine group. Yeah, I mean, they certainly didn't want people to find out about it. And they knew that we would be coming in some of the records we got from the city and county when when they were forwarding our records request around within their agencies. They would say things like we knew this one was coming like they knew that it would be on PETA's radar and they didn't want us to find out about it because we would be alerting people what this actually means for their community and exposing the lies that this company is is trying to convince them of that these are that these are good jobs. These are not good jobs. These are traumatic jobs. They don't pay that great. And it's very dangerous work. They're not jobs that anyone wants their kids to have here. This is not the kind of business they want to be welcoming. And it's a business that won't stick around forever because the, you know this industry is going to shut down. There are good alternatives that we could be using that don't involve any of the cruelty or risks that come with experimenting on monkeys. So now that it's all out in the open somewhat, and they're trying to, some folks are pushing to undo it, are people who didn't take a side or, you know, were kind of indifferent said, yeah, you know, we, we could use this in our, in Bainbridge and Decatur County. Are there some people who see the light or are, are there actually some people who say, yeah, go safe for human medicine. We want 30,000 monkeys in Decatur, Georgia. You know, I'm sure that there's some people who might want this for one reason or another, but they're not being vocal. And what we are seeing, you know, I went to the county commissioner meeting, the last one that happened. And I was joined by the room was beyond capacity, standing room only, probably 150 people in that room. The commissioner, Pete Stevens, said he's never seen that room anywhere near that full. And it was full entirely of people there to speak out against what the monkey farm would do to the community and to express their concerns. And it was person after person giving heartfelt testimonies and public comments saying, you know, telling these commissioners, I've known you for 30 years. I can't believe that you would approve something like this and you would think that you could do it without the people even knowing about it. And it, it was really powerful to experience that, to be honest, of this just uh, community organizing on a very grassroots level and people just really concerned about their community. And what are the top three fears that they have? These people who say, not in my backyard, we don't want 30,000 monkeys in a lab or, you know, in a monkey farm that will be used for this bogus animal research. What are the top three fears or concerns that they have? Well, I think one of the overall concerns is the people involved in safer human medicine and kind of their past experience, like, and where they're coming from, you know, like the CEO of this new company, Safer Human Medicine. He was the former chief operating officer at Invigo during the time of the Invigo beagle breeding case where, you know, there were 70 violations of animal welfare laws. Eventually, Department of Justice stepped in and that the one where 4,000 beagles were eventually rescued and the place shut down. He was over that. He was one of the people lobbying against the very common sense Virginia bills. Um, that did eventually win. Uh, that's where he's coming from. And if he couldn't 
operates a 4,000 Beagle operation. These people are saying, how does he imagine he's going to do that with 30,000 non-human primates? Like that's, it's not going to work out well. It's going to be terrible. And what happens when they need to shut this facility down? What are we going to be left with? So that's like a big general concern, but they're also very concerned about um, the environmental impacts, uh, I would say is another big one for them and the closeness of the river of this facility and just what it could be doing to to their community on the environmental level. And, and there's there was no environmental impact report, right? The EIR as it's called, right? Yeah, we saw a kind of survey done, but it doesn't appear that they were following this survey and we're still following up on a lot of that to see what has happened when and what has not happened. The most recent thing that we found was that they should have applied for a a certain kind of permit before construction began, especially related to protecting the water. And they did not do that. They did not have the appropriate infrastructure, this kind of silt fencing before they started doing construction. And so um, they're starting to get some attention from the environmental protection division for that. So it's like every step of the way so far has not been done right as far as we can see. And they're building now, right? Or or have they, are they ready to go? They've started clearing the land. And so this, this area in the past was um, for like timber. So it was filled with trees. And, you know, if you, if you look at a satellite view, you see all these trees, they aren't there anymore. They've been tearing out those trees, cutting them down, even removing like the stumps and like getting rid of that. So that all has started, but not the actual building of the facility. And and this is really small town America politics that they were, it seems like they were taken by some big money folks from big companies like Charles River, like Invigo, and with promises of we're going to make your town rich. Uh, this is going to be like hitting the lottery. We're going to have 30,000 monkeys in, in a in a farm right here, and it's going to mean jobs. I mean, for some people, you could see how it could be appealing, I guess, huh? A little bit. Yeah. You know, like, I know you're in a small community. I come from a town of about 8,000 people. And yeah, when I finished college, there was nothing for me to go back to that community for. There were no jobs that could effectively pay off my student loans. I understand where they're coming from, that they want to bring in good jobs. I under, I do, I, I sympathize with them and what they have in front of them, but they've had other companies coming in that are better. There's other companies that could be coming in that are better. They're not going to pose the same kind of environmental risk. They're not going to be as controversial as this one. And they're going to be, hopefully there's companies out there that would be doing a public service rather than a disservice, which is what this company would be doing. So now I know you've been to the area a couple of times and you've gotten to know the um, the feel for the community. What's the feeling now? Do you think it's it's pretty much unanimous? again? Because we're talking about the people, and like there may be a handful of officials who might still want to get this done. But do you think the people are changing the minds of those officials and that it's like a majority of the people in Bainbridge and Decatur County? I do. I think it is a majority and they are very vocal and they have been really making an impact on these officials, especially the county commissioners. That has been obvious, even just watching their faces during that meeting when they were getting comment after comment from their peers and from their friends for decades and from their, you know, people who they had the same teacher in first grade, like they're they, you could see how they were being impacted really deeply from that. And that's, you know, a benefit of a small town community is that these people all know each other. They all talk to each other and they have really good relations with each other where they can do that, not just the officials, but just the broader community. So, and they're just such smart and kind people. I, it's just a really special community down there. But in the end, it's the sentiment toward the monkeys that wins them over or has to, right? Yeah. I mean, I think for a lot of them, and again, you know, they just, they, they know what this would do to their community and they're, they're not going to allow it. And yeah. And they, they, they watched the videos of the beagles and the way that those beagles were treated at the Invigo facility. And they all say, we do not want this guy coming into our community, especially not to be involved with other animals. And then as far as the monkeys, would this be a great place for monkeys? Really? 
No, because they'll be in cages, um, of course. You know, it's also you have the potential for hurricanes. I also learned from the residents down there that it is very common for the power to go out and sometimes it can last for weeks. That would be devastating to this kind of a facility if they don't have enormous amounts of generators that are super reliable. I mean, it's, yeah, that's, it, it's just, it's bound to be a catastrophe if, if this goes through. Pete is Amy Meyer, manager of Primate Experimentation Campaigns, is part of the team of lawyers and activists aiding Bainbridge, Georgia residents who are fighting that monkey project in southwest Georgia. This week, Decatur County commissioners voted down the project, but that doesn't stop things. The Bainbridge City Council meets next, and you can show your support no matter where you live. Go to PETA.org forward slash Bainbridge, that's B-A-I-N-B-R-I-D-G-E to take action to stop the monkey farm project in Georgia. And that's our show for today. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to send a link of this show to your friends. Tell them you like the PETA podcast. Contact us at PETA.org. You can find me on Twitter, at Emil Amok. That's E-M-I-L-A-M-O-K. Oh, Twitter, also known as X, right? At Emil Amok. Or see my vlog at AMOK.com. Or see my work at ALDEF, the Asian American Legal Defense and Education Fund. That's ALDEF, A-A-L-D-E-F dot org slash blog. Or get this podcast on YouTube at Emil Amok. One. Once again, thank you for listening. Check out all our episodes on your favorite podcast app or on Apple Podcasts, where you can subscribe to as well as rate and review the show. It helps get the word out about the issues you care about. Our music is provided by Carbon Works. Check them out on YouTube. And join us again next time. For more insight into animal rights and the fight for a cruelty-free world on The PETA Podcast. I'm Emil Guillermo. <laughs>